soon as you see the record, you can start. Our assignment was to show the correlation between the laws of uh, Tisha B'Av and the New Testament. Uh, I'll do this from the perspective of teaching a Noahide what they can do on Tish B'Av. So what can a Noahide do on Tish B'Av? I will not take the time here to define or justify the identity of a righteous Gentile, a Noahide, nor to explain the sad day of Tish B'Av, the day of Jewish mourning and the traditions of fasting, refraining from joy or happiness, doing nothing that brings comfort, a day of mourning by Jews around the world, a fast that dates back to the destruction of the first temple by the Babylonians in 586 BCE, a destruction that echoed too many times in history on the same ninth day of the month of Av. I'm not going to say a word about it, except perhaps that Christians have been the source of anti-Semitism too many times and so should not participate in the day of Jewish mourning, except perhaps maybe as an act of teshuva. There, I've said it. I'm not going to say anything else, except perhaps that Noahides are not obligated to do anything on Tish B'Av. Therefore, let whatever you do voluntarily be done out of compassion and your love for the people of the Torah. That was it. I said it. I'm not going to say anything else except perhaps that Noahides could do some things, which I will only talk about later, except perhaps they don't have to fast. They can wear makeup. Uh, they can wear leather shoes. They can take baths. They don't have to prepare for three weeks. They can greet each other. There, That was it. I'm not going to say a single word about it. Except perhaps in the New Testament, mourning is often associated with the death of someone. Except uh, in the book of Revelation, where we find mourning over the destruction of Babylon. This kind of mourning is more closely similar to the kind of mourning we have over the destruction of the temple and the city of Jerusalem. Let's talk about mourning. Let's first dispense with the kind of mourning associated with the death of someone. John 11:35. This is the shortest verse in the Bible. It says, Jesus wept. This means that nobody is promised to enjoy a life without sorrow or pain. John 14, 1, Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Later in this passage, Jesus continues by saying, My Father's house has many rooms. Those who are grieving may be comforted knowing that their loved one lives in these rooms with Jesus and that there is a room prepared for them. Revelation 21.4, John wrote the book of Revelation, a book of prophecy. In it, Christians are promised, we are promised, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old things order have passed away. John 16.22, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Yeshua died and rose again. And so we believe that Hashem will bring with Yeshua those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, 
we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so will we be with Adonai forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Essentially, Paul was saying what Nehemiah said in Nehemiah 8.10. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That is, do not grieve over the death of a dear one, for the joy of the Lord which comes in the morning in the resurrection is your strength. Others have no hope, but you have a promise from Hashem that your dear one will live again. The second kind of mourning is over the tragedies of life, when everything you know has been turned upside down. With the destruction of the temple, Jews struggle to understand their religion. It's like arguing that Yeshua could not be the Messiah because he died before doing everything prophesied about the Messiah. And now Judaism, the temple, died, if you will, before doing everything prophesied about the coming of the Messiah. With the destruction of the temple, questions abound. Were the prophets just proven wrong? Jewish thinkers, our rabbis, had to change a lot of their theology. With the temple gone, much of the Torah was proven not to be applicable anymore. Changes had to be made. Traditions done away with. The land was gone as was the ethnic identity. What would it mean to be Jewish, a Judean, if there was no Judea? What if everyone's language changed from Aramaic to Greek or Latin? Who would lead? What are the rabbis? They had to relocate the surviving Sanhedrin. What, what of the Mashiach? Where was he? How would he bring the people back? In the New Testament, there's another kind of mourning and comfort. Romans 8.28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And Matthew 5.4, this section of the New Testament is known as the Beatitudes. This particular verse says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. 1 Peter 5.7, give all your worries to him because he cares for you. Sometimes people say that the Bible is too hard to understand, but this verse seems simple. We are directed by Hashem not to worry. This reminder is found in numerous places throughout the Bible. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. In the second kind of mourning, we are not mourning over the death of loved ones. We are mourning over the coming and expression of what is called troubles. Tisha B'Av is longing to return to the way things used to be. It is mourning for the people and the religion lost to history. It's hoping that Hashem will redeem us. The New Testament teaches that through Yeshua, we have a heavenly temple. We are the living stones of a spiritual temple, a community of faith, a kingdom of God. We ourselves are the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of God. And yet... Another temple will be built in Jerusalem, a temple where Moshiach will be seated to rule the nations. Perhaps this temple will descend into the new Jerusalem. Perhaps the Messiah will build this new temple. Or perhaps he already has within us. How can we mourn the loss of the very being that dwells within us? How can we hope for something that Hashem has already given in Messiah Yeshua? That eternal assurance that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now we see that what early believers struggled with in the going away of the Mashiach, of the Messiah, all of Judaism now struggled with in the going away of the temple. For early believers, the problem and answer 
was the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua. This may also be the answer for the loss of the temple of Judaism, for Judaism. If you will, it is the death, burial, and resurrection of the temple. We believe when the Messiah returns, he will build the temple. In 2 Chronicles 36, 23, it says, Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, Hashem, God of heaven, has given to me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has commanded me to build him a temple in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever there is among you of his entire people, may Hashem, his God, be with him and let him go up. Revelation 22, 20 through 21 says, He who testifies to these things say, says, Yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Yeshua. The grace of the Lord Yeshua be with us all. Thus we have an understanding of mourning. This brings us to the other meaning of Tisha B'Av. If not the mourning of the temple and loss of religion because we are the temple and the Holy Spirit creates the kingdom of God, our religion, then all that is left is compassion for the death and destruction that has repeated itself through history on the 9th of Av. We could challenge our compassion by asking, what did we do to warrant this destruction? This borders on anti-Semitism. We could counter, we are commanded to exterminate and destroy the Amalekites. Thus, it is within Hashem's wisdom to destroy a people completely. Were we ever warned that Hashem might destroy us? And under what kind of circumstances would the eternal judge mete out such destruction against his people. This kind of thinking assumes we can think about and understand the ways of Hashem, which the Bible tells us his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, so we really can't do it. Trying to understand the catastrophes of the ninth of Av misses the point. We do not study the destruction to justify them in our hearts as though we could judge God. After the Noahide set aside pride and hubris, you're left in a, the humble hope that you too might not be destroyed by the Almighty. Now in this frame of humility, you can love and hold God's people in compassion as together we weep for the loss of our identity, our religious understanding, our people and ancestors, our wealth and land and so forth. So I'm going to conclude with the question I started with. What can Noahides do on Tisha B'Av? Here's some suggestions. Give to charities that don't conflict with the Torah laws or morals. Pray that the third temple be established by Moshiach ben David very speedily in our days. Read the book of Lamentations and or the book of Job on the night and or day of Tisha B'Av. Read the Wars of the Jews and the Romans by Josephus. Send money to charities in the land of Israel. Support the local synagogue or Jewish community center. Take active steps to reduce anti-Semitism to become righteous Gentiles, to rescue Jews. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I suppose, do what Yeshua taught you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Baruch Hashem.